Good morning, guys. Happy Wednesday. We are halfway through this week. So the first thing that I want to mention is that something I know people are going to notice. This is supposed to say Lesson 17. For some reason, the 1 is not there. It's Lesson 17. Just roll with it. Don't, don't worry. It is the right paper. So we're going to continue rounding. We're going to take a look at rounding to the nearest thousand. So same thing we've been doing. You can use the hill. You can use the vertical number line. Our numbers are just getting a little bit bigger each day. Nothing too crazy. So we're looking at 6,700. So as always, our starting number is right here on the bottom. We would go, let's see, let's think about this. When we go and we round by tens, we count, we have a 10, then we have a value of five in the middle, and then another 10. When we go and we round by hundreds, it goes 100, 150, 200. So now rounding by thousands, it's going to go 6,000, 6,500. Look, we still have that five value. It just got larger and 7,000. Now we have to decide if 6,700 is closer to 6,000 or 7,000. So here's 6,500, 6,600, 6,700. All right, so we know this is officially closer where did my pencil go? To 7,000 than it is to 6,000. All right, let's take a look at problem B. We're going to model this one using the hill method because as I'm grading work, I'm seeing a lot of people are using that. So I want to continue showing it to us both ways. So my hill is unfortunately leaning a little towards the right, but you know, we'll be okay. It's fine. It's math class, not art class. We get the picture. All right, so we're at 9,000. So here's our start, 9,000. And our option on the other side would be 10,000. We're at 9,000. 300 and I can see that this is going to come straight back down and it is closer to 9,000 than it is to 10. And if I go and I model my thinking on the vertical number chart, I'm going to find the same thing. I'm going to put my 9,000. I'm going to kind of use this one for both because it's very conveniently placed. It's kind of in the middle. So it'll work for our hill and our number line. So 9,100, 9,200, 9,300. Still confirming we are closer to 9,000. Just because I know Kate is dying to say this, yes, it is over 9,000. Okay, let's look at 16,401. Our numbers are getting bigger, but nothing that we do will change. Here's 16,000, 16,500. And then our alternative up top is 17,000. Pay attention to your commas. You go one, two, three from the back. When you place your commas, always start counting from the back and make your decision based on that. Don't count from the front because you're going to end up with it in a weird spot. Count from the last number from the very end. 16,401, 16,100, 200, 300, 400. Boom. It's going to stay 16,000. So when we first get these numbers, they're kind of intimidating because they're large numbers. And so far, we've dealt with numbers this big, but not all that many. But the more that we work with them, the more that we see nothing changes, 
we just have a little bit more to write. That's the only thing happening there. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to label my next number line. And our alternative here is 40,000. So we're at 3,900 or 30, oh my gosh, 39,545. And that's going to be right here. These fives are when it gets confusing for us. So I'm going to draw a hill. And this is a reminder that when we have a five, it's on this side of the hill. It's on the going down side. So here we are. This is going to go that way. That ball will slide down that side of the hill which will place it closer to 40,000 than it is, wow, my comma just got eaten by my zero, than it is 39,000. It is almost there. Now our numbers are just continuing to grow. We're at 399,499. We are rounding to the thousands place. So what we need to keep in mind with rounding to the thousands place is we're not rounding the 10,000. We are only concerned about this guy. So here we'd say, no, 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 we're staying at 3,999. We're not doing anything else because it's the numbers behind that change to zero. Here, our alternative would be to go to 3,999 and then 500. Now this is where it gets tricky. This is where we start making mistakes. When we have to cross to the next 10, to the next 100, the next 1,000, this is a scary looking problem because it's got a lot of numbers on it. But you guys are going to go and you are going to just kill it. You're going to do an awesome job because there's nothing to be afraid of with this. The only thing that we have to consider is we're at a nine. So that means our next thousands value is going to have a zero, which will affect all of these numbers simply because these numbers were already so high. The next thousand is in the 400 thousands. And we are at 399,499. This is the number, that nine, that second nine, this is the one that is affecting it. So 100, 200, 300, 400. This is still closer to 399,000 than it is to 400,000. We're going to leave it alone. Don't do anything else. Just let it be. I think that E was definitely our scary problem of the day. It had a lot going on there. F is not going to seem nearly so bad, even though the numbers are larger, and it's because they're easier. We don't have so many transitions to make. Oh man, that was supposed to be an 8. We're just going to do that, and boom, here's an 8. Just like that. Nobody saw anything. And then our next thousand would be not a squiggle. That would not be ideal. 841,000. So we're at 840,007. That number is so teeny tiny. It's so close to here that we don't even have a tick mark to put it on. We're not doing a thing to this. It is closest to 840,000. And just like that, you guys have done these crazy, scary big numbers. And it wasn't bad at all. This one was a little bad. But everything else, those were easy numbers. Nothing to be afraid of as the numbers get larger. Nothing happens. Let's take a look. We have three word problems on the back. It says a pilot wanted to know about how many kilometers he flew on his last three flights. So 
So I'm going to go and I'm going to make flight one, flight two, and flight three. Because that's going to be easier than keeping track of everything in my head. Always make a list so that you have your information organized. It stops you from having to go back and reread the problem over and over again. Now, my keyword is about. We've been doing rounding all week. So we know, wow, that wasn't the rounding symbol I hoped for. Hmm. We know that we're looking for approximate answers. From New York City, that's NYC, New York City, to London, he flew 5,572 kilometers. Okay, so I'm going to round that to the nearest thousand. That's the theme of our day, it's thousands. So 5,000. 572. Here's a number being rounded. There's a number that's making the choice for it. It's a five. Fives mean we go up. So for flight one, he flew about 6,000 kilometers. Then from London to Beijing, he flew 8,147. I'm deciding with my eight. I know that ones mean nothing happened, so it flew about, he flew, excuse me, about 8,000 kilometers. Let's look at our third flight. Finally, he flew 10,996 kilometers from Beijing back to New York City. All right, so I'm looking at my thousands place, that's right here. This is the number making the choice. Nines mean I go up. He flew about 11,000 miles. Round each number to the nearest thousand and then find the sum of the rounded numbers to estimate about how many kilometers the pilot flew. So here's the nice thing when we're rounding stuff with zeros, we get to poof some zeros. So we are dealing with three zeros. I'm gonna let them hang out here. And then I just need to add 6, 8, and 11. So I can really do this in any particular order that I want. I'm going to do the 6 and the 8 first. 6 plus 8 is 14. And then I'm going to add 11 to it. So that's 10 and one more. You can break it up as 10 and one more. 14 plus 10 is 24 plus 1. He flew about... 25,000 miles. That problem was not bad at all. That was really a pretty easy one. Let's look at our next one. It says Mrs. Smith's class is learning about healthy eating habits. They learned that the average child should consume about 12,000 calories each week. The keyword is week. The keyword is not per day. Please do not eat 12,000 calories per day. That's really, really bad for you. That's the whole week, seven days in a week. Carrie consumed 12,748 calories last week. Tyler consumed 11,702 calories last week. Round to the nearest thousand to find who consumed closer to the recommended number of calories. Use pictures, numbers, or words to explain. We're going to be using numbers to explain. All right, so Carrie consumed 12,748. I'm rounding to the thousand, so I'm worried about my, my, about my two. My seven makes the choice. Seven means we go up. So Carrie ate about 13,000 calories last week. Tyler consumed 11,000. Underline your thousands. Look at the hunt at the place that's on the right. That's making your choice. 11,702 will round up to 12,000. So Tyler ate closer to the recommended amount of calories. We had another super easy word problem. They're giving us a little bit of a break because our numbers are big, but the problems themselves are pretty easy. All right, let's look at our last problem for today. It says for the 2013-2014 school year, I think 
think you guys were babies during that school year. Man, I feel old right now. The cost of tuition at Cornell University was $43,000 when rounded to the nearest thousand. What is the greatest possible amount the tuition could be? What is the least possible amount the tuition could be? All right, we've got a mean word problem here. This one is not so fun because it's asking us for a range of values. Guys, I can't draw a star today to save my life. What is happening? So I'm going to go and I'm going to divide my screen. I'm not even going to try and do a straight line. I just did a wiggly line. So here's the greatest. Here's the least. All right, the largest number that could still round to $43,000. We know it has to round down. So that number will start with 43,000. So I know to keep this a three, I cannot have anything greater than a four in my hundreds place. Remember, these are your, your 10,000s. These are your regular thousands. These are your hundreds your tens, your ones. Now our tens and our ones are not affecting us in any way. We can make these as big as we want and we need to make them as large as possible because we want the greatest number. The greatest number is 43,499. You cannot make your number any larger because if we make it 43,500, that's gonna round up to 44,000, not down to 43. We can kind of go crazy with the tens and the ones, but the hundred is what's making our choice. What is the least possible amount the tuition could be? So this is the number that will round up to 43,000 when rounding to the thousand place. The smallest number that that can be. So this is easy. Remember, I've always said that the finding the big one is hard, but finding the least possible is the best. Because what you do is you go down to 43,000 and $1. Because your hundreds are a zero. Your tens are a zero. You could go all the way down just to 43,000. However, we've talked about it's not really rounding if you say, oh, 43,000 is about 43,000. No, it actually is that number. For rounding, we need things to be approximate. So the lowest value that it could be would be 43,001. We have nothing here, we have nothing there, and the one is, meaning, is making us round as opposed to just being like, ha-ha, 43,000.